Hello everyone, this is my experience I'd like to share with you with this BMW X3 F25 model. It's 3 liter diesel N57 engine. The car was uh, advertised as runs and drives at Copart, uh, which it did. I started the engine and it was running. Uh, everything was good until I took the car home. It has a, had a small front end damage, nothing serious. The problem started when uh, when I checked the oil filter, which was full full of uh, metal particles. So that that was a bad thing. This hinted at crankshaft bearing failure. So this is the car front end damage. Wasn't too bad, non structural. The front bumper was damaged. The car, apart from that, looked decent a few scratches nothing major so the front end was the you know damaged part the grill the two headlights unfortunately actually these are quite expensive uh, adaptive headlights xenon headlights so i disassembled everything wasn't too difficult yeah as you can see on on the video the damage wasn't that bad would have been a very easy fix but unfortunately this was the the last thing to worry about after this i uh, started removing more and more bits the radiator is damaged the ac radiator and the front frame structure the aluminium part luckily the intercooler is, is not damaged so the two radiators needed replacement Now I have pretty good access to the engine, which I have decided to remove in order to assess the damage. It's an X-Drive car, so that's a bit tricky. You have to remove the front shafts, but after that it's a straightforward job. So I removed the engine and I started disassembling it. I started with the top. But the gearbox remained on the on the car. It was easier this way. Unfortunately, I don't have access to a proper elevator jack. So I had to work with what I've had on my hands. But nevertheless, the, the engine is out. I started uh, with the top. The wiring harness, injectors, uh, valve cover, everything, uh, everything came off. That's the the front uh, differential. Uh, very interesting thing. The car had a brand brand new oil oil pan, which was interesting. Brand new original one. So that was already a clue that something happened to the original one. Either they fractured it or whatever happened, this was a brand new oil pan. So I had an idea at least that why why the bearings, or I don't know how many of them, failed. So I was pretty sure at this stage that I'm gonna find some nasty stuff uh, in that engine. I started removing the, the bits, the, the oil pump, the timing chain. This is the removal of the injectors. Uh, it wasn't a very difficult process. I, I've done a few timing chains before, so it was a straightforward job. Also, I was hoping probably the the camshafts are worn, and that's what's causing the the small particles. And unfortunately, that wasn't the case. The camshaft looked quite good, in good condition. So, yeah, at this stage, I was 100, 100% sure that it's the, the bottom end, either the connecting row bearings or the main ones. So I, I removed the timing cover, timing chain was a little bit stretched, it wasn't on the original chain, this has been replaced at least once. It was, it was quite stretched, but wasn't rattling. So I removed the timing chain and uh, also I removed the, the camshaft carrier, so I will have all the valves up so I can move the pistons freely when I'm removing the, the bearings. 
I found nothing suspicious or nothing out of ordinary, luckily. I couldn't find any signs of oil starvation uh, up here. So yeah, that was a good uh, good sign. But uh, yeah, what followed was was the the scary thing. I didn't have the the engine tool at that time to hold the engine properly so I had to put it on its side and uh, that's how I started undoing first the connecting rod bearings one by one first I loosened the, the bolts and then I use my my impact to to undo the the bolts not to damage them I started with uh, I don't know, it's number one or number six. I'm not sure which way the engine is now oriented. The main thing is that the connecting rod bearings looked almost brand new. So it was, uh, it was clear the, the small particles are not coming from the connecting rod bearings. I removed all six of them so I can push the pistons up a little bit so I have uh, movement in the crankshaft. Yeah, like I said, almost brand new, all six of them. No, uh, no crazy stuff. So oil starvation wasn't present at this stage. I was quite relieved, but also it was a very intense uh, process, you know, removing one by one and, and waiting which one's gonna be the, the damaged one. So these are all six of the connecting rod bearings, almost new. These are the main ones and straight the, fir the, the first cap, you know, it's already showing some, some worn signs, but nothing crazy. I didn't have to go, you know, further to find the, the damaged one. So this is the cap number seven. <sighs> to this day, I, I don't know if it was a spawn bearing or partially spawn. Uh, it was still in, in the shell. There was no sign of spinning. I would say it, say it was partially spun. Yeah, this was a sad, sad moment when I found this one because uh, usually this means a new block at least. I removed the, the rest of them, all looked good, looked good, I mean relatively good. They had some some damage, but uh, nothing crazy. So only one cap, the furthest one from the oil pump, which gave me another clue that that oil, brand new oil pan had to do something with this. I still believe that somehow they fractured the, the previous one and the car was, was used at least a few seconds or I don't know how, how long <clears throat> without oil pressure. And cap number seven was the, the furthest from the oil pump and that was taking the, the damage, at least this is my theory. Uh, the rest of them, all all seven, they have some some you know signs of you know mileage. The car I didn't mention has a hundred and fifty one thousand miles, so that that would explain the the board. This is how the the block looks. There was no sign of spinning, so the or was quite in decent shape. So this is where I am at the moment. I'm gonna take the engine block and the crankshaft to an engine specialist. So in the next video we're gonna continue from here. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.